It's the 13th annual Candleton Bowling Championship. Competing for the $10,000 grand prize are last year's winner and top seed Dick O'Connell of Ellington, who qualified with a 438. Gary Carrington of Plasto, New Hampshire, who qualified with a 434. Joe Ashline of Nashua, New Hampshire, who qualified with a 426. Three-time champion Tommy Olsta of Sturbridge, who qualified with a 425. And Dan Myrick of Pittsfield, who qualified with a 418. Hi, everybody. Welcome to our 13th show. Can you imagine that? 13 of these we've had already. This is the True Value Championship, and you can tell by the excitement in the air, the crowd that's here, that we have five top candlepin bowlers. I couldn't pick a winner. I'll tell you, they're all great. As you know, that in addition to the fact that uh, they're going to receive prizes, we will tell you that, that the, the winner is going to get $10,000, the runner-up will get $5,000, third place is good for $2,500, and then the fourth place tie will be $1,250. Also, each of our bowlers will have a permanent souvenir. They will receive a trophy. Appropriately, the largest will go to the champion and so on down the line. So they will have something to remember and something to put in their pocket because they're guaranteed money. Now, it's going to work a little bit uh, differently than our regular show, and here to tell you about that is my colleague and the, the host of Candleton Doubles, Brian Leary. Okay, tell them how it's going to go. Don, good to be with you again. And, of course, the guy who's in the driver's seat here is Dick O'Connell with his 438. He just gets to sit there nice and comfortably and watch everyone else try to put themselves in a position to take him on. It'll be a long haul as well. Two strings under these lights with uh, $10,000 at stake for the first prize money. Uh, so there'll be some uh, sweating going on before we get to the finals. Here how we, here's how we go now. We start with the quarterfinal matches, two of them. Dan Myrick, the fifth seed with a 418, will take on our number two seed, Gary Carrington, who qualified with a 434. And then in our second match, the other quarterfinal, Tom Olsta, who just made it on the last week of qualifying with a 425. The fourth seed, he'll take on Joe Ashline, our number three seed with a 426. And then the winners of those quarterfinal matches will meet in the semifinal, and the winner of the semifinal will move on to the final. Two strings against Dick O'Connell for a $10,000 top prize. Okay, Brian, and all the prize money we ordinarily have, you know the big one, $1,000 for three strikes in a row and 50 for three marks in a row, all those things will be in effect. I've got nothing more to say. Why don't we start right after this? <laughs> Fit for real. Leading it off, Dan Myrick. Danny, our fifth seed. He had a pretty good run. Danny came on back in uh, February. And uh, he was on for one, two, three, four, five, six weeks. Had a good run. The only one probably not having a good time here is the former fifth seed, Nick Lombardi. He was all set until the, uh, the final week of the season. That's right. Tommy Olsen knocked him off last week. I think that's the second time that uh, Tommy did that. Once before, uh, the man he eliminated was Fran Honorado. I believe it was in the last week, too. Tommy's been on six times. Just missing. a great crowd here at the Pilgrim Lane. Boy, it's wall to wall. And now Gary Carrington. He was sensational. Gary's got a league average of 131.
Brian, you almost expect every time you see a split like that for these guys to make it. That's right, and I'm sure we'll see a lot of them, too. Like that. Like all great athletes in any sport, they make it look easy. Gary has a little bit of a home court advantage here. This is where he normally bowls. His dad works here at Pilgrim Lanes. I'm not sure he's ever bowled before this many people, though. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I kidded him a little when he first came in. I said, gee, you have a long ride getting here? He said, yeah, it took all of five minutes. Of course, he hasn't bowled for a $10,000 top prize before either, although I'm sure he's bowled for a, a buck or two. Mm-hmm. So a pair of tens for Gary. Oh, boy, there is pressure here, isn't there, huh? Leading by two pins right now. As you can see, our, we have added for this our new electronic scoreboard. And a strike for Dan Murray. Our new electronic scoreboard, Al Gilio, whom you ordinarily see on the big board. He has two strikes in a row! I think we've eliminated the home court advantage. I guess so. <laughs> Gary is a great competitor. His high single is 194, his high triple 458, just missing that three pin. I'm sure a lot of the folks who are here making a lot of noise are rooting for Gary, particularly because they know this is his home house. Is it gonna go? Yes. All right, for the first time, we are going to pause. We'll be back again. Both bowlers have the bonus balls to go, and of course, Dan Myrick has two strikes in a row, and you know what that could mean. We'll be right back. Star Trek. The next. Need say no more. Had he been able to make that, there was an extra bonus of one thousand dollars. He can still make a spare, and that would be worth fifty dollars in bonus money. Not quite. So nine will be the fill on the. This second strike. And he gets a 10. Through five, 72. Is it gonna go? One box to late. He was just about an inch away from $2,000. You're right, because had he had three in a row, that would have been a thousand, and then the subsequent, or each subsequent, would be worth a thousand dollars apiece. Now Gary Carrington, working on a spare. There's a break. The seven pin to pick up for another spare. Deflected it off the 10 pin. Instead, he went around it, which is a tougher shot. He made it. Carrington, who is considered in this instance because he had the higher qualifying score as the leader. And he goes back with a strike. Oh, baby, we've got one going now. But the crowd makes a little bit of a difference here. Oh, it must. Look at that. Now down to five, and each of them has a strike in this box. Myrick's first ball. 
I was speaking to Joe Ashline before we began. He kind of expected that the bowling would be pretty good coming right out of the shoot. It's so hot, everyone's pumped up, and with the crowd, it wouldn't take any time at all to limber up, and sure enough. Boy, we're seeing that. Going for that head pin. Oh, he just missed the nine pin. But it's a fine nine pin fill on his strike, and now it's a nine box. He just missed for a ten. Boy, there is pressure in these one stringers right now. You win this string, or you're out. Boy, he's been on that head pin. Danny's league average right now is 125. He's one of the few with a high single of 200, and you can see why when you watch him. Danny's first time in our championship show. All right, and I. Gary Carrington, and he has three marks in a row, $50 in bonus money. But he's got a strike up there. That's the important thing. Couldn't make that fall. But both bowlers now for the last five boxes have just smothered the head pin. made some shots in the first couple of boxes he had great conversions they were only for 10 fills and here in the seventh another one for spare now he will take the lead a big nine But the wood helped him. He has five marks in a row. Leading by six, and he's got a spare up on the board opposite Dan. Now Dan Myrick, last two boxes. And again, even though he had nines in the last two, he was all over the head pin. He's yet to miss it. One, seven, ten. It's an eye. All right, last box now for Dan Myrick. Danny put together those three strikes, uh, unfortunately, not in a row. Five and nine are the two pins still standing. He wants this fair. Oh, there'll be a reaction if he gets it. Yes! Already at 128. Not only did he want it, he needed it desperately in order to have a shot. How about that? A 137. 137 for Dan Murray. Gary Carrington right now at 116 plus and two boxes to go. A good fill here, and he won't have to get a mark in the last two boxes. So this is the big one. That's all right. He got a fine fill. He got an eight. So he's only four pins away now from winning it. That's right. He's opposite a 137. 
Four to tie, five to win. Now the danger is chopping wood, punching out. There's one. The pressure, the pressure rises a little bit. I would bet a healthy amount that it's going to be wrapped up right here. That's it. it. Gary Carrington will advance. to 137 what a fine opening match oh baby i don't see how the others can top this but we'll find out right after this familiar doesn't he he's been in this thing six times Tom Osa of Sturbridge Massachusetts six times he's a three-time winner but last year remember he got knocked off in the opening round Joe Tavernese of Lynn dumped him Tommy right now has a league average of 129 and of course he's got that sizzling high single of 209 been on so many times and, it, and he last week qualified for this with his 425 one pin less than Joe Ashline two four and ten those are the pins Got the two on the left, but surprisingly did not move it over. Joe Ashline, National New Hampshire. Joe with a league average of 126. He has a high single of 203. Qualified with a 426. Also had a long ride. Nashua, New Hampshire. Huh. Oh, yes. Boy, when these guys make their spares, they make them with authority, don't they? Nice shot of that spare. And he comes back with a strike. What a start for Joe Ashline. How does that make you feel if you're Tom Olsen? Well, given that you're a three-time winner, maybe you just get your moving, that's all. How do you feel if you're Dan Myrick, though? You throw up 72 through the first five, and you still wind up losing. Boy, he made a great appearance. Wow. We've seen some good bowling over the last few years, the last 13 years that we've been on with this championship, but I can't remember a start like this. Neither can I. A seven pin is rocking, but it won't go down. So the fill is eight. He's got wood in the middle, wood at the seven, and he's got the 10 over there. Oh, baby, you open. That sidewall action, he made that pin come slamming over, but unfortunately, it did not go over to get the 10. Now, Joe Ashline. Joe's had a busy few days for himself. His softball team is engaged in the championship play right now, but uh, I think he admitted that this was a little bit more important. First ball gets him a nine drop, and he's looking at the two pin for a spare and $50 in bonus money and a great start against Tom Olstad. Six-time participant, three-time winner. He's got it. Joe Ashline, a salesman for Annexter Colonial Corporation out of Nashua, New Hampshire. $50 in bonus money. Boys and girls, are we watching something or are we watching something? Holy mackerel! 
Oh, as Harry Carey would say, holy cow. Okay, we're gonna pause and come back again right after this. Tom Osta on the line and uh, down already by 23. The five pin with Wood. And the second mark for Tom Osta. But he's opposite a red hot Joe Ashline. He says, all right. Boy, I wouldn't want to be trying to make that one. He seemed to think everything was fine with that middle wood stop, but let's see how he goes for it. He wanted to go a little more left than that. Yeah, I'm sure he did. All right, through six. Tommy's struggling. He's had just two marks, and Joe Ashline absolutely torrid right now. Working on a strike. Then hit that time. A little too pumped up, maybe. He hooked that almost all the way over into the uh, the ten pin. <laughs> Holy wow! Let's watch now how that seven pin goes down. Look, look at the wood come across. There it goes. $150 in bonus money, but never mind that. He is perfect so far. I mentioned he plays softball. After watching him here, it's hard to imagine that he's actually a slow pitch softball player. He is? Boy, he knocks it around. He fires that thing like Roger Clemens. All right, Tom Olsen now. Four boxes to go. And down by 29. Four horsemen right side, no wood to help. Is that a point, as you mentioned a, a string ago, you just expect these to go now? Yep. They get such action, such wonderful action. Well, he's won this three times in every kind of way as Ralph well. Stewart is our lob line judge and referee, as always, and he's just called time. He wants to go down and take a look at the piece of wood that's this side of the Deadwood line. The hand pull Ralph. He's hit. Don't count him out yet. Now, Joe Ashline already at 104. One, three, seven, and ten. One piece of wood down near the ten. One, three, the object. Didn't get it. A nine. So Tom picked up nine. Now it's down to 20. Two full on the head pin. Well, this could be the Myrak Carrington match revisited with Dan Myrak shooting out to an early 15 pin lead and then seeing Gary Carrington get, get hot and wrap it up. Do you think uh, Joe Ashline isn't under a little pressure right now after starting off the way he did, but seeing Tommy come back? Wow. <laughs> Hmm, left the goal post. Tommy picks up two more, plus whatever he throws now. Al Giglio keeping that electronic scoreboard up there so we know exactly what the lead is. There it is. The lead for Joe Ashline, 20 pins, but Tom is going to cut into that with this. Eight more. And a spare lead with the two and the five. Well, it's down to ten. With 
two and to go. He's got it. Holly Oster coming back. One more mark here in the tenth, and it would force Joe Ashline to come up with a mark in either the ninth or tenth. And you know he's thinking about that right now. Seven. And if this goes, this crowd of close to a thousand here will erupt. They sure will. The one, the seven, the nine, and Wood to the right of the one. Let's see what he can do with it. Nope, got two thirds of it. One thirty eight. A couple of nines would win it. He's almost got one of them right there. For a spare? No. One thirty one needs a one thirty nine. One time, Joe, one time. All right, he's got six of them down. He needs three of these. Actually, two more will do it. Two more. Oh, baby. Now it is down to the final ball. 1 would tie and 2 would win. Yeah. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Can you imagine? I can't imagine any of these bowlers losing with a 137. Tommy Ulster has has survived. That's about the best way we can say. Joe Ashline starting off with five marks in a row and then needing just two pins of the four standing and missed twice. Unbelievable. So we are now going to have Tom Osta against Gary Carrington to find out which one is going to face Dick O'Connell in the two string final. This one just ended, 138-137. Can the semifinal possibly match the quarterfinals? I'll tell you one thing, this will be colorful. We have two of the most colorful bowlers around here, two of the most demonstrative anyway, and Tom Olsen and Gary Carrington. Tommy will lead off since uh, his qualifying score was not as high as uh, Gary Carrington. What a start! What you're hearing in the background, which sounds like E, 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 E. Actually, they're saying T, 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 T. For Tommy. Wow. Good for him. Fortunately for him, he has an extra bonus ball to throw after that first one. Oh, surprise, surprise. How about that? Only four. Well. Not often you see too many four boxes out of Tom Olsen. Oh, I guess not. Would you say maybe that the adrenaline had something to do with uh, holding onto that ball as long as he did and firing it across lane? Just a little bit, I think. Gary Carrington on the line. After that first string, we were wondering what can make Dan Myrick feel better after a 137 and losing. Well, maybe having someone else do the same thing. Joe Ashline, they both had identical 137s, and they're sitting and watching. Gary Carrington is an electrician's helper. Married and has uh, one son, Matthew. Lives up the road a piece in Plasto, New Hampshire.
Gary did everything up here, down on his knee, waving his hands, whatever, but it would not go. There it is. Tom Olsta. Once again, he's gone cross lane too far, missing the head pin. Amazing. Now, that, that four in a row that he has put cross lane. Five in a row. Try to imagine someone that can make up a 20 pin deficit in four boxes can get just 11 pins total in two. Six in a row. Seven to the left of the head pin. Gary Carrington working on a spare. Seems strange to see a four box and a seven box up there. Oh, when Tom Olsen sat down, he said to Dan Myrick, I don't, I can't understand that. I just lost control. All right, Gary Carrington will be looking right now at the uh, left side primarily, which is made up of the two, four, five, then the seven and eight. He's got the 10 also. I mentioned Ralph Stewart. Don Riley is also here, our statistician coordinator, and today acting as auxiliary referee. Seven pin to pick up. Lots of wood on the deck. There it goes. For a 10. That's what it looks like right now. A five pin lead at the moment. And we are going to take another pause. And we'll be back again for the rest of this semifinal right after this. Continues Tom Osta on the line, trailing by at least five. Three, six on the right, four on the left, a little piece of wood. Got the right side. Well, it seems like he's regaining control now anyway. The ball's going where he wants it. The way he picked off the right and then came back for the single pin, it would seem that way. But he is opposite a spear. Six pins still standing. Tommy, one of the fastest workers. And Ashline also, very fast. Pretty 10. He wishes it were a spare, obviously. Well, let's see now what kind of a fill is going to happen here. But Gary Carrington has that spare in the fourth. Leading in the match and completed and pins already down as far as uh, what he's opposite. He's up by five plus how many more? Plus eight more. Is there going to be more? Gary almost went over above five lanes that time with the body English. Five and seven. Wood in between. Kenny Aiken. Yes. Oh, baby. We'll take another look at that. Watch how he uses the wood. I guess we don't get to it. Because he's on the line, ready to go again. Two marks in a row. And... Six is the fill. Four horsemen. He's bowled well here this year. He won the uh, 88 NBA All-Events Championship right here at Pilgrim Lanes. And 
That's right. He is the 1988 Massachusetts Bowling Association All Events Champion. He has another $50 in bonus money. Tommy Ulster has two pins to knock down for another mark. And he's in an even tougher position than he was in the first match. Down by 19 plus going into the final four. He did not need that. Ten. Let's see if he can get this, because he needs it. Nope. Now Gary Carrington with three marks in a row and well on his way at this moment, you would have to say, to going into the final against Dick O'Connell. Dick, by the way, very quietly went over to a far corner here and uh, warmed up a little bit. Now he's back just watching. One thing, one wonderful thing about being the top seed here is you walk in the door and you're guaranteed $5,000 just for showing up. But he's not thinking that. He's thinking 10, just as he did last year when he won. The downside is you get to sit and watch everyone else blow off these high scores. So he did not make it four in a row. He's got the 10. That's a three pin over on the right, but it's a tough angle to go over and get four seven. He tried, tried the sidewall. Now Tom Ulster down to the final two and he's down by 27. Ralph Stewart calls time. And that'll pretty much settle it. He really needed to run off two or three strikes in a row to start off. Good try, but it appears that uh, what, what I suppose would be appropriate, the two men with the highest totals, the 438 and 434 meeting for the final. That appears what it's going to be. Uh, Tom Osta. Very disappointing for Tom, I'm sure, after rolling a 138 to come back here and not break 100. But that streak there that he had where he couldn't seem to control the ball at all and everything went left, he had seven in a row. Yeah, and he just can't make any sense out of it. He couldn't. He shook his head when he sat down after that string of uh, the four and the seven and the second and third. All right, it's all over. Just a question of what the score will be, the final score of this semifinal. Joe Ashline and Dan Myrick have been eliminated, but will receive $1,250 in prize money plus bonus money. Tom Olsta gets $2,500. And... Gary Carrington is gu guaranteed at least five and has the shot at the big one. He just wants to throw these final three down there and move on to the, the ones that count now. He's done well so far as bonus money. He's got $200 on the board already, and of course he has two more strings in which to get some more. One more. Tom Osta congratulates Gary Carrington. And it will be the two bowlers who came into our True Value Championship 
with the highest three-string totals, the 438 and the 434, appropriately will be meeting in the two-string final, which we'll get to right after this. Here's the time. The final. Here's our top seed, Dick O'Connell, Babington. He will lead off in the first string, and uh, Gary Carrington will lead off in the second. Dick O'Connell won it last year over Peter Flynn. They asked Dick if he still had the 10,000 from last year in the bank. Uh, the answer was no, so he needs another one now. He has his own uh, electrical contracting business. No mark to start there. Right now, a league average of 126. It's an on. This is our 13th show, as you know. And uh, I just have a couple of notes that I want to mention about uh, a couple of uh, our former champions, Ron Brewer, who won in 1982. Ron Brewer of Weymouth is at home right now, recuperating from a heart attack. So we wish him well. And anybody else that wants to send along their wishes, I'm sure he'd appreciate it. Dick O'Connell. Right now with the 9 and 10. Waiting right now to see what Dick O'Connell uh, will do here. Nice shot. The other of our champions that I said I was going to have a note about it was Ray McGurk, who was our champion two years ago. And uh, although he himself is all right, uh, Ray McGurk's father is in the hospital. And some of you bowling fans I know would want to know that. And uh, one other note. Our substitute statistician, Peg Philbrook of Magnolia, is at home recovering from a serious illness. And we have our best wishes for a complete and speedy recovery. Nice shot. Well, the Carrington family is expecting you in here. They're seated only a couple of seats away from me. They were talking just two minutes ago about going out and buying Chinese food and handing the check to young Gary. So spending the winnings before it gets into his hands. Well, that's nice to have that kind of confidence, right? Pretty shot. O'Connell, Tupel gets five, but no wood to help. This is the biggie, the final two strings, but uh, at the moment it's paling by comparison to the two quarterfinals. That was a surprise. You see Joe Ashline. He sort of, the look on his face was... I guess, I can't guess exactly what he was thinking, but he might have said, well, gee, I'm not the only one to miss. I thought in Joe Ashline's head is probably uh, one more pin and I'd be here. Uh-huh. That close to a strike. Left the six pin. He has it. Phil Rubin, of course, is our producer and director. Our switcher today is Skip Peabody, and on audio is Dave Gardner, some of our cameramen, Bill Freewald, Leroy McLaren, Alan Pratt. Our lighting director, Jerry Mio. Gary Carrington fires, and he's got a 4-7 on the left and a 10 over on the right. 
Steve Bailey on transmission. Al Brewer is our utility man. Slow mo is Jeff Sullivan. He got the left side. Electronic graphics, Jim Lowell. Our assistant director, Scott Philbrick. Bruce Goldman is running the board right here for the folks who can see it. And I've told you before, Al Giglio is running our new electronic scoreboard. Tough split. <laughs> You've got a problem. I think he knows that. He's converted some like this, though, so far. That's a little bit too tough. He set himself a high standard, certainly, in the first match today, the quarterfinal with a 143. A 10. So we're going to pause one more time here after four boxes. Uh, we'll go right through on the final uh, string. But right now, you can take a look at that scoreboard and uh, got a peek at it? Okay, we'll come back and pick up the action right after this. Dick O'Connell, our top seed and defending champion, working on a spare. This will be the fill. about that two the old half Worcester left for a second it looked as if he was going to go right down the same spot tonight and ten. When he was uh, delivering the ball as it was coming into the pocket, it looked like it was going to be a big, big hit. Then it looked like it was going to be a nothing hit. And now he winds up with a spare lead, basically, but he was unable to take advantage of it. Well, again, given the nature of their deliveries, they get so much action on it, even if they miss a hit. Then they... Boy, how true that is. Nine. as well but probably a combination of the two the delivery and the, the help they get down there Dick O'Connell <laughs> one pin lead for Dick O'Connell after five Okay, first ball gets him six, and he's got the uh, diamond kind of set up there with a piece of wood in between and a piece of wood in a nice position. Right alongside three and five. Oh, the nine did not go. That was one of those where you're almost ready to turn towards the scorekeeper and say, mark it. 
Yeah, Dick couldn't believe it. This has been kind of like a prize fight. They're just feeling themselves out for the first couple of rounds, the first few boxes, and then as soon as someone lays some leather on the other guy, they respond in kind. Now Gary Carrington. He's working on a strike. Some of the bowlers today will be uh, competing in what the Masters Bowling Association would like you to know, and that is that they will be sending six men and six women to New Brunswick, Canada this coming October to compete against the best bowlers from Maine and New Hampshire and the United States, Nova Scotia and New Brunswick and Canada. This event rotates annually between the five competing areas and is sponsored by the International Canada Bowling Association. The NBA will select its bowlers from the highest qualifiers in the open events of this year's tournament. Some of the bowlers today will be in there. Nine. They'll be bowling Saturday afternoon, October 22nd, continue Sunday morning and afternoon with a wind-up banquet Sunday evening. So, uh, obviously, we in the NBA wish them luck. You think these Look guys at that are, split, huh? You think these guys are competitive here? They say that up in Canada, they, those matches really get ugly. They shout at one another as you're about to deliver the ball and everything else. What a try. What a try. Wow. Nine again. You mean to say that those people who are up in my old Nova Scotia would would act like that? I can't believe it. <laughs> For those that left, obviously, have better manners. So. <laughs> <laughs> you wormed out of that one. <laughs> okay, Dick O'Connell has two pins to pick up on the left-hand side, the four and the seven. Waiting for a piece of wood to settle down, the one that was in the center. Now it is, there it is, and he will attack this. Boxes. He's up by 12. Five. That's the fill. Four horsemen left side and the nine pin. A little warm in here with all these folks. These guys were sweating as soon as they arrived. 20,000 at stake. I think they would have been sweating probably with this thing even if the air conditioning was on full. Missed the head pin. So he'll try for a 10. One twenty-four. That's what he puts up on the board for the first. Remember, this is a two-string match right now for the $10,000 first prize. And Gary Carrington comes up. He was down by 12. He's opposite a spare five and a 10. Two, four, five, and seven on the left. Ten over on the right. Piece of wood just to the right of the five. Did not catch the side of that two pin, which is what he wanted. Nine. So he drops six more. He's down by 18 now. This is going to top five and nine. Is that? Or is it five and six? It's a five and six. Five and, and six, I guess it was. Six. Yeah. So 
So Dick O'Connell takes a lead. And of course, it's total pinfall of the two. So he takes 18 pins as his lead into the second match. And it's not bad to have a handicap of 18 right off the bat, huh? Give him something to think about for the next minute and a half anyway. I'll say. We'll be back with the final right after this. This is it, the final string. Gary Carrington will lead it off, trailing by 18 as he goes into this final string. to turn in a string like his opener at 143. Not bad, not bad. Nine pin drop and the five pin, the king pin to pick up for another spare. Oh, he missed it. He can't believe it. It's there for a 10. seven on the left hand the three pin piece of wood and bat don't know how much good it'll do whoa a little slip huh. he did that a couple of times when he was warming up earlier today I'm not sure exactly why I haven't noticed any of the other bullets doing it what a nice try O'Connell with a 10. One more note, the WCBC, the World Cannabis Bowling Congress, most of these guys belong to it, about to start its 17th Pro Tour season, September 17th, 18th, with a tournament at the Academy Lanes in Bradford, Massachusetts. If you want any further information about joining or anything else, you write to WCBC, Post Office Box 545, Webster, Massachusetts, 01570. Watch it. One, seven, eight, and ten, a lot of wood to help make it look pretty. Gary Carrington working on the spare, and how many did he get? Still thinking, I'm sure, about that single pin that he missed in the second box. Probably thinking of it right now as he faces this single pin. That's the fill. Side by side, four and five, plus the seven. Piece of wood looks nice. That's just it, it just looked nice, I guess.
10. He got eight, and a great chance for another. And remember, he had 18 pins. That was uh, his lead after the first, 124 to 106. Yes. You know, Joe Ashline pointed out before we began today that uh, whoever had to go through right from the quarterfinal round would likely be tired by now because we're into the fourth string, under the lights, live pressure, 20,000 at stake. That may be taking a bit of a toll on Gary Carrington right now, whereas Dick O'Connell is pretty fresh. Then I suppose there's the other side of the coin. You sit there and you wait and you wait and you wait and you're dying to go and dying to go and whatever, and you hope you haven't lost it. Well, I asked Dick if he wanted to change places with any of the other bowlers, and uh, he wasn't too willing to do that. Gee, I'm surprised. <laughs> that close, one pin to three marks in a row. <laughs> Gary, in this string, has picked up three, but that's the so that cuts the 18 pin lead down to 15. It's a big hit. He has the 10 pin to pick up for a spare. He has it. Five boxes left for Gary Carrington. Oh, he threw up his hands in horror because he knew he was coming right in fat on the head pin. That's been the difference between this and the opening string. He just been, hasn't been able to put anything together. He's had three marks here, but none of them consecutive. Spread eagle. There goes the right side. One of the most frustrating things, of course, is the spread eagle. You've done what you want to do. You came in on the head pin. But if you're filling a spare, you know you've got very little chance of getting two in a row, and your fill is only four. Just ask Dan Myrick about it. Two strikes in a row, and then he punches down the middle, follows that up with a strike. Yeah, it came that close, so close to four in a row. <laughs> Dick O'Connell with a spare lead. Boy, he's tough. It again. Oh, that'll help Gary Carrington get five pins closer now, down to ten. It's interesting, the development, if you will, of uh, Dick O'Connell. He made his first appearance on our show, which was a losing one back in 1975. Didn't qualify again for another five or five years. Lost again. Waited another four years before getting on. Lost again. But then when he came on in 1987, he had one, two, three, four, five wins in a row, came on this show, won the $10,000, came on again this year, won eight in a row, and qualified as top seed. So I guess uh, you shouldn't get discouraged, or as uh, Paul Horning used to say, practice, practice, practice. Paul was a pretty thoughtful guy, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> Gary Carrington, we are down to four. And the lead is down to nine. That makes a big difference. You can turn it all around in just one box now. They are shooting for $10,000. And nine pins separating them right now with four boxes to go. Nine, not what he wanted to do. Well, whoever can put a streak together of a couple of marks in a row, it seems, will take it. Well, they had four marks in the string so far. That's a big hit. Now, Dick O'Connell comes up. His lead of 18 has been cut to nine. He is opposite a nine box and a strike. Ooh, how about that? The only thing worse would have been if that was a fill. One of the most interesting things about this game is that you can do that. Just miss the head pin and knock out one pin. Ooh. The knot begins to tighten a little bit. Boy, he just settled himself down, didn't he? You can almost see him stopping, looking, and saying, I've got to get these pins on the right-hand side. He's happy to get out of that with an eight box, but still, now it's down to eight, and he's opposite a strike. Another open frame here, and we'll be all even, essentially. He wants to mark this. Four horsemen, left side. He did it! Boy, that's a big one. Oh, what a big pressure mark. And finally goes. Each of our bowlers with a mark in the eighth. Two boxes to go. The lead down to eight pins. This man trailing right now. Two bonus balls to roll. First one gets him five. Leaves him with the one, two, seven, nine, ten. Wow, so close. At least it gets a nine for the fill. Single for the ten? Yes. And one more box for Gary Carrington. He really does need a mark here. Uh-huh. Otherwise, Dick O'Connell can just cruise in without a mark in the last two. Look at that split, will you? Eight and ten. Eight and ten with wood. We have to wait to see where that wood stops. I think he knows that this really is a $5,000 ball he's about to throw here, the difference between five and ten. I think he thought he was going to make that. I think he really thought he was going to make that. He hung it out a little wider to the left than I think he wanted to. Yeah, there was too much of a, an angle, or maybe not enough of an angle, whichever way you want to say it. it. It did not go over, obviously, to get the 10. A 128. Right now, Dick O'Connell is at 89. Needs a 110 to tie. 111 to win. He needs 23 pins to get even all together. And a 
the last two, including the There are the six of them. Ball. So a pair of ten. A pair of tens. No. We'll do it. A couple of nines would do it. Oh, that's it. That's That'll it. That'll really do it. That is it. He's at 105 right now. He had 18 pins in his pocket coming in here. A 110 to tie it. That did it right there. He has won. For the second year in a row, Dick O'Connell has the $10,000 first prize. He'll be getting a check from Ed Lashinsky, the district supervisor of True Value Hardware Stores and the trophy. And really, you have to appreciate how difficult it is to repeat as a champion because for one thing, you've got to get in here. That's right. Have one of the top five for the year. First of all, you have to qualify just to get on the show. All right. And everybody gathering around. And we will have the final presentation. Nick O'Connell has won the $10,000. Gary Parrish in five. Tommy Oster, 2,500. Ashline and Myrick, 1250. We'll be right back. True Value Hardware, your store of first choice. How about a hand, first of all, for all of the bowlers? Huh? Yeah. Some sensational bowling. Absolutely wonderful bowling today. We don't have time to get everybody up here individually because we are running out of time, but the one man, the number one man, is going to come up here, Dick O'Connell, who did it two years in a row. And Ed Lashinsky, the district sales manager for True Value Hardware Stores, is going to pick the... And he gets the big one. There you go. You. And for the second year in a row, $10,000. Anything you want to say? Just want to say hi to my mom, my dad, and my kids at home. That's all. That's all. In, in the Enterprise Club. And Good you'll be home with the check, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Congratulations to you and to everybody. You guys were great. And to you people, too. Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody. Hope you loved it. I did. <laughs>